hopefully we'll let other people know because it's something really cool that a lot of people would like to do and be part of. We had, it all depends on the weather. If we had nice weather today, we'd, uh, be, there'd be a lot more here. Yeah. It's not bad the way it is, but it could have been a lot better. We're going to ask you a couple questions. How, yeah. how old is the car club? Car club's been together since 1976. What is that? 30, uh, 33, 33 years. Yeah. How long have you been a member? 33 years. <laughs> How long have you been president? Well, I'm not president. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. chairman of the car show. Okay, gotcha. I'm probably chairman for life because nobody else wants to do it. Rick Crow is actually chairman of the car show, of our car club. I think he's probably president for life too because nobody else wants to do that. We're, we're wondering because it's this is so well organized, and we were just wondering it's got to be a lot of work. Why do you guys do it? Takes that? about well, there's, there's really two reasons we do it. Number one, we just we like an opportunity to uh, for people to see old cars because that's their hobby and that's their passion. This is an opportunity to bring a lot of really nice cars into the community and give our local people an opportunity to see them. Uh, we also uh, raise money for, for several uh, charitable causes. Our primary uh, cause that we support is Toy Box. We buy bicycles for Toy Box at Christmas. And that's the, the single biggest use of the proceeds. And then we also support the Parks Foundation and uh, you know, two or three other things. How many members do you guys have? We've got about 60. Okay. Most of our guys now are in their 50s and 60s. Uh, we were on our 20s when we got started. How fun is that? Yeah, I was, I was 26, you know, when I got in the club. You know, now I'm almost 60. So. Um, and we've had a car show every year. This is our 32nd car show. So we had our first car show about a year after we had our club on it. Any restoration projects that seemed impossible that actually turned out? Well, yeah. Probably uh, Fred Vincell is, is probably the, the king of the, the impossible restoration projects. He will actually take a car that's, that he, he will buy pieces of four different cars and put them together. He actually had a 55 Chevy convertible that he did get with, and uh, it ended up being a beautiful car when it was done. It was turquoise with a white top, and he sold it a few years ago. But he's got a 33 or 34 Ford Coupe right now that's under construction. And uh, he bought basically four different cars, pieces of each one, and welded them all together to make, to make a single body. So, How does he go about finding those parts and pieces? Just, you know, he just scavenges, you know, makes phone calls, goes to swap meets. You know, there's, there's a network out there, you know old car guys, you know, we all know each other and, you know, somebody hears about something and they tell everybody else, so what's the have to fun, you know, is, is, is tracking down the, the cars and the parts. Yeah. yeah. What kind of time's involved in restoring one of these cars? Obviously the condition, original condition has something to do with that, but you know, it's it's, it's not uncommon for somebody to take uh, you know, five to ten years to get one done. It took me six years to get mine done after I took it apart. Depends on how much time you have and how much energy you have. It seemed to be difficult on some of these parts to maybe find parts to have a car actually running on, especially the really old ones. Do they have to have some of them built? Well, yeah. for a car like mine, a 55 Chevy, you can buy almost every piece of that car brand new. Somebody remanufactures it and reproduces it, but it's very expensive. Uh -huh. So if you have enough money, you can buy almost anything. Now, years ago, you had to go to junkyards and buy them, go to swap meets. You know, now most of it you can buy new. Unless you have something unusual, you know. If you have some, something that's rare, you know, then you basically... Today, it's a lot easier because you've got the Internet. Years ago, you had to make a phone call. You call somebody and you ask him who else he knew. And so you get, you know, ten names and phone numbers and you call all those people. You know, now you can just go out on the Internet. So that's actually made a lot easier to track parts down. Is this your only car you have? Like, it's an older yeah. car? It's the only one I have now. Have you had others in the past? Yeah, yeah. I've had, this is my, uh, this would be my, I guess my fourth one. Actually, I had a 55 Chevy when I was in high school. It was my first car. I had one when I was in high school, and I had one when I was in my early 20s. And then I had a 37 Chevy Coupe. I had that. I built that car from scratch. And then I had a 32 Plymouth Coupe that I built from scratch. And 
I saw both of those cars, and then I've, I've had this one since 1983. So I've had this, I've had this car longer than I've had my wife. <laughs> I've had her since 1985. But you still have both. That's yeah, what's good. Yeah, still have both. Yeah, we actually got married in this car. So really? This was our wedding car. That is cool. Yeah, I was thinking about selling it, you know, a couple of years ago, but my kids didn't. You can't do that, yeah. You know, they, you know, the car's been around as long as they can remember. Yeah, so. you can't sell it. It's, this is a hand-me-down. Yeah, so you know, some sentimental there. So have all you guys watched the movie of uh, Gran Torino with Clint Eastwood, oh. where he reached out? I have. I don't know about the other Isn't guys. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> pretty neat. Yeah. Do, uh, cool. do people do this, typically make money off of them? They do it just for the passion of it? or it's combination. You know, it's very difficult to build a car and, and make any money. You can you can buy one that's done a lot cheaper than you can build one. Really? Yeah. Unless that's, you're doing all of the labor yourself, which not very many people can do that. So it's really more of a passion than it right. is a uh, money maker. That's right. It's a pastime. Well, you know, and the other reason we do it is, is to meet other car people. You know, that's like, you know, that's who I hang out with, the guys in my car club. Are there a number of clubs in the area down this area? You know, there's two that's been around forever and ever. The Kappa Hall is an antique car club. They, they primarily have original cars, and they've been around probably for 50 years. Uh, they've been around as long as I can remember. And uh, they're primarily original cars. We're primarily modified custom cars, street rods, hot rods, stuff like that. So how many shows are there in the Boot Hill area, this, this region? Starting, starting in uh, around the 1st of May, there's probably at least two or three every weekend. They're like golf tournaments. <laughs> and, and that's probably within a 100-mile radius of Cape. You know, I'm talking about from Poplar Bluff up to uh, you know, Mount Vernon, uh, you know, going down to the Boot Hill. So there's lots of, lots of car shows in Southern Illinois. And, uh, and the primary, the primary way that we market our shows to other car owners is with flyers. We go to their shows and we pass out flyers with the flyers and all the cars. That's, right. that's how I found out about the shows. Okay. If I go to a show when it's time to leave, I'll have ten flyers in my front. Really? Yeah. Sounds like the guy we need to talk to about our calendar. Yeah. We'll pass that on if you can pass that on to your members because we've got some of them and we'll try to put everybody's names. Why don't you email it to me? <laughs> Email to me first. Okay. Meet me? Yep.